I want to make very clear what I think of Richard Warman. I want to make it very clear that I think Richard Warman needs to face a debate, a public debate, where he explains to ordinary people why he thinks that he or others should be able to determine what other people hear, and why he thinks that the world will be a better place when all those he calls hate mongers can't speak. I'd like to hear him explain how he thinks government can decide what should be said and by whom. I'd like to hear him come forward and justify all the things he says in terms of the control of speech that human rights legislation involves. I would certainly enjoy a respectful, courteous, and pleasant discussion with Mr. Warman about these issues for the simple reason that it's only when the two ideas are contrasted side by side, the idea that I purport to uh, maintain, the idea that the best and brightest people in the world have every right to communicate as long as they do not advocate violence. That's all that should ever be necessary to control speech. It's already been controlled by the criminal code because throughout all of our history it's been illegal to threaten violence. You, and it's illegal to counsel the commission of an offense. It's illegal to counsel genocide. It was always illegal to counsel genocide. We didn't need amendments to the criminal code. We didn't need the Human Rights Act to do that. Why? Well, because it was a crime to advocate the commission of a crime. Be it of a murder of an individual or the murder of a group of people, it's still murder. And to counsel the commission of an offense was always an offense. So therefore, all these laws which have basically empowered people like Richard Warman, like human rights tribunals appointed by the Prime Minister, all these laws have been unnecessary to protect society from any real danger and have been in fact the most serious danger to freedom of expression on controversial topics. It's time Mr. Warman stood up in front of large numbers of people in a free and democratic society where he will be protected by the police just as I will and explains to people why he thinks he's a better judge of what other people should say than they are. I challenge him and anyone who supports those positions to a debate anywhere, anytime. I'd be happy to be there. What can Mr. Warman say to a challenge to a debate? Well, I would imagine the first thing he'll say is he doesn't want to give credibility to someone he will call a Nazi or a neo-Nazi. He will accuse me of being that. But you see, that invo involves the prejudice of a presumption of guilt before there's an argument. That's in effect denying the opportunity to hear both sides because you label one side incapable of debate or impossible to uh, respond to. And by that I mean he's um, smearing his opponent so that he doesn't have to debate with them. And this is a process that is not a rational argument. Let me make another possible interpretation of what he might do. He might say that he has some reason to fear for himself. Well, of course, if you fear violence, that's a legitimate argument. But I don't think that he has any more reason to fear violence than I would. Anyone is capable of doing violent, irrational, and illegal things. I mean, I've been the victim of as much concern in that regard, or reason for concern, as he might have. Maybe more. At least I can point to actual events. But the law is there to protect us all, and if we were out of, a re out of no reasonable fear to be silent about important issues, then criminals win. Then, there is no point to having opinions because we can't express them. And that may be the situation that will result if people adopt the views of Richard Warman. We will not have our arguments anymore, we'll have complete silence, and we won't have rational debate. So I say that let's show courage in pursuit of the principles we believe in. If I have any reason to fear, 
I'll overcome that fear by standing up for what I believe. And I would invite Mr. Warman to do the same. That is, let's uh, operate on the assumption that people will behave in a rational and non-violent manner, and let's stand up for the things we believe in and argue for them, because after all, that's what a free and democratic society is for. That supposedly is the benefit of a free and democratic society. Let's exercise the rights we have so we don't lose them. That applies both to him and to me. A debate is the best way to resolve differences of a philosophical nature, and that's the difference that we have. So, Mr. Warman, let's debate. I'll do everything in my power to be courteous and respectful to you and to your point of view, and I would expect the same from you. I'm sure we can count on the police to protect us both, and the debate will be very interesting. Maybe even we'll add to your uh, already existing popularity. Maybe not. But the important thing is the public will get a chance to decide for themselves who's making the most rational arguments. I'm not afraid of that. Are you?